Hello, this is Pastor Bill Johnson from the First United Methodist Church of Orange in Orange, California, with a Wednesday edition of We Are the Church. And a very blessed uh, Wednesday to you, wherever you are these little moments of encouragement that we've been sharing during the COVID pandemic feed my soul, and I hope they do yours as well. We have been making our way through the Songs of Ascent in the book of Psalms, and we're at Psalm 133 today, and we only have two left. This is the next to the last of the Songs of Ascent. And uh, so I want you to uh, find that place in your Bible, Psalm 133. And let's get going. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head and running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing life forevermore. Any parent who has had more than one child knows that the greatest blessing you can have is to see those children getting along together in such a way that there's no mistaking their love for one another. I remember the first time when my Children were small that I saw them all walking along and holding hands and talking and laughing and giggling. And they, they weren't very old at all and how much it warmed my heart. And I am blessed to say that as my children have grown older, they have stayed friends with each other. They call one another uh, unprompted. They send text messages all the time. They laugh together and they cry together and they share each other's burdens. And uh, this is really a a thing of peace for a father. And I think how much it must grieve the heart of God right now when so many parts of our culture are struggling and when we are facing natural and even uh, human-made disasters uh, all around the world. And instead of pulling together, we seem to be pulling ourselves apart at times. I think how much this must grieve the heart of God. This psalmist has chosen near the top of the steps that lead up to the temple. The top of the steps that lead the way into the holy place and inside of there the most holy place. Before turning and facing God, the, to look out from that top step of the temple and affirm that the basis of God's ordination of our eternal life is that we learn to love one another. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when kindred dwell in unity together. Now there might have been a time in your life or in mine when you thought kindred means the people in my biological family, the people that I am connected to by name or by tradition or by tribe people who look like me or talk like me or have my accent. But the truth is, the world has grown small enough now that we know that we are all kindred in this place together. None of us can afford to be without anyone else. We need all of the voices weighing in. And we've got to find a way to dwell in unity together. God will work with us on this. But we see again and again in the scriptures that, uh, that God's blessing uh, is couched in the ability of human beings to love one another. That it was almost as if to say, before we can take our sacrifice to the Lord, we have first to make peace with each other. Jesus pointed us in this direction. The gospel writers ask, how can you say that you love God whom no one has seen if you're having a hard time loving the people who are right in front of you? Jesus said, you know, when we are busy noticing the speck in our brother's eye, we have forgotten to take the log out of our own eye. 
And so the teachings continue. And I want to share that in my own experience, over the 35 plus years of ordained ministry that I have uh, been serving God's church, 90 to 95 percent of the problems that people are having with God when they come to me with God problems are really problems with God's people. That we tend to blame the Lord for uh, some of the problems we're having when the problems themselves are with the people around us. So I want to encourage you today to do your part to build up the unity not only of the body of Christ, but the unity of our community, the unity of our state, the unity, the unity of the nation we live in, and the unity of this human species. Be a part of the solution today. Be a part of the positive steps forward. And if you're looking for a place to start, find the person who has some grievance against you and find the language and the ability to tell them you're sorry. Whenever People have lined up together and they're rattling sabers and banging their shields. Somebody has to take the first step of putting down their shield. Someone has to take the risk of going first. Why not let that be you today? Take a step forward today to make peace with somebody. Because in the peace that we find with our neighbors and with our friends, with our family, and yes, even with our enemies, God has ordained life forevermore. So let's be sure that we help someone know that they are loved today. Will you pray with me? Loving God, as we miss the rituals and the rites of our church life together, as we miss standing in the sanctuary and we miss the beauty of the choir singing and the beauty of the candlelit altar, we realize that none of these things are worth comparing to the gift of having unity with one another. And until, O oh Lord, we can gather in your house, there are so many things we can do to promote the unity of our community and of our uh, world. So Lord, let us be a part of that process today. Strengthen and enable us to do the work that is necessary to connect with our neighbors, to reach out in love, to use all means necessary to make that connection with the people around us so that they may know the love of Christ through our hands and our feet and our words and our texts and our phone calls. And so, O oh Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, every time I start to talk about how we can get along with one another, somebody will tell me, hey, you've stopped preaching and you've started meddling. And I hope so. I hope so. Because no faith uh, is really possible unless we can share it with someone else. Or as John Wesley said, there can be no personal holiness apart from social holiness. We have to connect to each other. So make the connection today. And as you do, remember, wash your hands, read a psalm, tell somebody today that you love them. I'll see you tomorrow.